Welcome to Kingdom Principles for Daily Living by Doxa Mission. At Doxa Mission, we believe in healing for the total person, spirit, soul, and body. I am Dr. Ndidi Dagu. Today, we will be looking at the kingdom principle, when things don't work as planned. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise as we go into your word. We are grateful for your word. We ask that you use me as a vessel unto honor, and we ask that you help us to be doers of your word. As we receive, your word will be for fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we'll start off by looking at Romans chapter 15, verse 24. I'm reading it from the Amplified Version. And it says, I hope to see you in passing through Rome as I go on my intended trip to Spain and to be aided on my journey there by you after I have enjoyed your company for a little while. Now this scripture in Romans was written by Paul to the Romans. Even though he wrote it with an expectation of traveling to get to Rome, he never got uh, sorry, traveling to get to Spain, he never got to Spain. Instead, he landed in prison and was eventually transported to Rome in prison. Now, incidentally, it was in Rome and because he was incarcerated and his plans did not come to pass and because he was unavailable, he wrote the epistles to the Romans, he wrote the epistles to the Corinthians, he wrote the epistles to the Philippians, to Philemon, he wrote many of these as letters to convey his messages and feelings that were transported through visitors who came to see him in prison. Now, it is very interesting that were he not imprisoned, he wouldn't have written these letters. And nowadays, as we look at the value of these letters, which now formed a large percentage of the New Testament of the Bible, we say that we can hardly preach a sound scriptural message nowadays for 15 minutes without referring one way or the other to one of these epistles that Paul wrote. Just like, planned Paul, uh, just like Paul planned and it didn't come to pass, so many times we plan and believe God for something we want in life and it may not work exactly as we planned. Usually when this happens, we are, you, we are unhappy because it has happened. And this makes it difficult for us. Now, the world will, is not going to devote itself to making you happy. And it is only when you accept this, when we accept this, that we will begin to move forward in the world. Many times in our lives, we believe that Everything must be good for us, especially as Christians, that once we believe God, then things must go as we want it to go. And we really get unhappy when this does not happen. Some of us give God an, um, uh, certain conditions as to what we want. Yes, it is good for our faith that we set a time span and believe God. But sometimes, I say, even a man of faith 
like Paul, who had a plan. He did not work out exactly as he planned. Much times, like I said, the generality of life may not work as we plan. But, even in that disappointment, we will find out that if we take it in the right perspective, if we take it in the right frame of mind, if we perceive it right, we'll find out that that disappointment, what we believe is a disappointment, will turn out to become God's appointment. It will turn out to become a blessing. Like we say in a proverb, every disappointment is a blessing. Let's look at another scripture, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, from Amplified. A man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. And Proverbs 20, 24 says, A man's steps are ordered by the Lord. How then can a man understand his way? And so looking at the scriptures, we should comfort ourselves each time first of all i will advise check ourselves if we are in the will of god of definitely if you are not in the will of god you should get yourself back into his will because this is where the scriptures would apply to us now when we look at the scriptures we just read, are we not glad that according to those scriptures, it is God that is in charge of our lives, directing it, no matter what happens? I am glad. And because of this, we should be confident in the things we do. Yes, philosophers ponder and argue why life according to the word that we use in the modern days these days, why life sucks. As a child of God, all we need to do is focus on how to live life in Christ, how to live a joyful and faithful life in Christ. This is what will see us through. Because no matter how it goes, you may think you are the, in quotes, luckiest person on earth but at one time, point in time or the other something will come up that will not go the way you expected it to go now when you look at these incidents and how it happened it reminds of how an oyster let's use it as an example makes a pearl how we can turn these things around or the, the, the comfort we get can be gotten by looking at how it is. Now, an oyster is a soft animal that protects itself with a hard shell. Now, when an oyster leaves and dies, usually we pick the shells and when we look inside, many times we see a pearl. A pearl does not form in a day. But the real thing that happens is that a grain of sand gets into the shell of an oyster. An oyster does not have hands to remove that grain of sand. It lodges between its hard shell and its soft body, irritating it. But what does an oyster do? do um, what does it do? It wraps the sand in a layer of of what God has given it to protect itself, which is that hardened substance that eventually um, forms into a pearl. And layers and layers of this is formed to soften the effect of the sand. And so it is from an irritation from, a, from something that is not good for the oyster that a pearl is formed. Now, if I think of what happens with what an oyster can do with a grain of sand that got under his skin, then 
what can I do with all these disappointments, things that irritate me, things that make me unhappy because they did not go the way I planned it to go. God is at work in what we are doing every day. And he is at work for our good. He is at work for our glory. All we need to do is trust him and see how he is going to do it for us. Now there are many examples in life that help us understand the benefit of waiting on the Lord in spite of a disappointment of something that has happened. I remember the story of, of reading about the story of Winston Churchill, one of the prime ministers um, of England. The stories I read let me understand that at sixth grade he failed. His sixth grade. He had to repeat and he was disappointed with it. He was he um, later went through school and contested many elections but almost all the elections he contested several of them he fell short in most of the political posts and he continued and continued and continued until the main election he won was that in which he became the British Prime Minister at the age of 62. Can you imagine how much disappointment he had? What if he gave up? He would never have become the famous Winston Churchill, um, the Prime Minister of, uh, of Britain. We look at Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb. His teachers actually told him that he was too stupid to learn. Now, this is one thing we should be careful about. If Thomas Edison had listened to his teachers, he would not have gone on to achieve what he achieved that is benefiting us till today. Even though he was told this, he never gave up. As teachers, we need to be careful what we say to children. It could affect their lives indelibly. Even when he started and he became an inventor, he tried over uh, about a thousand times in his attempt to make the light bulb work. Each time he tried, he failed until as he persevered one of his attempts now worked now it is interesting this is a principle that i call failing forward recently um elon musk uh, tried to recycle rockets that is sending rockets out into outer space for it to come back to recover it so that it can be reused and save a lot of money. He has tried many times. The, the time before the last he tried, it exploded like before, but they celebrated even though they didn't succeed. This is that principle I'm talking about. What Elon Musk said then was that the amount of data that they gained with that rocket that exploded will help them in the next phase of his plan and true to it i think it last week or two weeks ago he succeeded in landing back a rocket so this is the principle i'm talking about failing forward you continue to try in spite of things not going exactly the way you planned it we also have the story of Cornel sanders of kfc which is almost ubiquitous around the world. He actually went with his, with his receipt many times to many restaurant chains for them to try it out and over a thousand times he was rejected but he never gave up and eventually he had his breakthrough and KFC is what it is today because he didn't give up. And so I'm encouraging us Whatever is happening, whatever failure 
or difficulty or plans that didn't succeed, don't give up. We should be encouraged by 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, which says, The Lord does not delay and is not tardy or slow about what he promises, according to some people's conception of slowness, but is long-suffering, extraordinarily patient towards you, not desiring that any should perish, but that all should turn to repentance. And Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. There is a time for you to succeed. And Habakkuk in uh, Habakkuk 2.3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Now, there is a right time, as I just mentioned, for everything. God is never late. Whatever you are expecting from God, He is never late and there is nothing too difficult for Him to do. Even though you want it right now, at the end you find out that God is always on time. At the end of the day, you will say thank you, for that thing I was expecting did not come at the time I expected it to come. If it had, I would not have had so, so, and so, and so experience. It's not that the Lord wants us to suffer, but there is a best time because the Lord knows our future. One of the ways, or one of the thing, two things I'm going to highlight today that will help us to... Um, be able to go through these situations and circumstances that seem impossible, that seem like failures, that make us unhappy, is to hold on to hope. Hope is a very important aspect of it. Job chapter 14, verses 7 to 9 says, If a tree is cut down but still retains its roots, the moment it contacts water, it will begin to grow again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 14 says, For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. It doesn't matter your situation. So long as you are alive, it is well. The lion is king in the world of animals. But a dead lion loses all its worth. Even an animal that has no value, but is still alive, is worth more than a dead lion to us. But for a child of God, hope is not even lost in death, because we look at death as a temporary change of address, an ad change of address from the earth here to be in heaven with God as children of God. So no matter what the situation is, we should still hold on to hope. So long as you are alive, there is an appointed time for you to receive that blessing that you are trusting the Lord for. Aside from hope, the other thing, second thing I'm going to encourage us is to maintain your joy in the Lord. Habakkuk had a good concept of it and as he wrote in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, I quote, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me thread on my high places. And so like Job, if we just look for something the Lord has done for us, and we use it to have joy in the Lord of our salvation, the fact that we are saved should be a lot of joy. There are many people that are not saved. The fact that we are still alive 
It doesn't matter the condition. Should give us joy in the Lord. We should praise him. Worship him. And if we maintain this, it will help us to stand strong and await that breakthrough that we are trusting in him for. I encourage you today, don't give up. That miracle you are expecting from God is just around the corner. Hold on to hope. Hold on to the joy of the Lord. And it will come to pass in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. We receive it. Amen. And amen. Thank you for listening. If you were blessed by this message, please like it and share with others. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more messages at Doxa Missions. That is D-O-X-A-M-I-S-S-I-O-N-S on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook at Doxa Missions and on Twitter at Doxa Missions. We are also on Instagram at Doxa Missions SLU. God bless you.